The book of Psalms, chapter 138, verse 2. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. This is the brother of Bob. You're from the GMS Virginia camp. Before I get started, like always, I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah Bashem, Rakhach with us. Double honor to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, the minute I learned the truth from. And Shalom, peace and blessings goes out too. The whole full of the nation of Israel scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Sincerely waiting and enduring until the return of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach to deliver us out of this last captivity. Yeah, the Lord has magnified his word above his name. So when you read the Bible, um, you have to take into account that any promise or any covenant that the Lord has given or any oath that the Lord has given is still into effect to this day. He has not changed it. He has not altered it um, a, as in it being disannulled or disavowed, all right? For he has magnified his word above his name. He, he is not a man like the scriptures say that he should lie. Men lie, but the most I don't. So um, let's get Genesis chapter 12 real quick. The first, one of the first covenants that the Lord ever, ever established, which was with um, the patriarch Abraham. This is Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. It said, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse, curse thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now, the Lord kept that promise. You look at the nations today, whether it be Ishmael, whether it be Jacob, which is the 12 tribes, whether it be um, Edom, Esau, all, all these nations have had um, their rulerships on the earth. They all have been made into great nations. They have some form of power, all right? They have some type of blessing, all right? But the Lord promised Abraham a key blessing in which a certain seed a certain nation through his loins would in turn rule over the whole planet earth in righteousness and be blessed over all nations now before i get that um we all know abraham and sarah was having um trouble conceiving so abraham brought up the brought up the point that he had a servant from damascus named eliezer let me get that in genesis chapter 15 uh, this is Genesis chapter 15 um, and I'm going to start at verse 1 it says after these things the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying fear not Abram I am thy shield and thy, and thy exceeding great reward and Abraham said Lord power what would thou give me seeing I go childless and the steward of my house is Eliezer of Damascus and Abraham said behold to me thou hast given no seed and lo one born in my house is mine heir so he said, I'm going to make my servant Eliezer of Damascus my heir. All right? But this is what the Lord said. Verse 4. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. All right? So let's get that word bowels um, in the concordance. And it says internal organs, inward parts, bowels, belly, all right? So out of his loins, all right? Out of his ball sack, his lineage, okay? That's where his air was going to come from. So that cuts the fact that people are saying, Christians will bring up, no, all nations will be blessed. That ain't what they're talking about. All nations have been chosen from Abraham's seed. No, because if that was the case, the Lord would have just allowed Eliezer, the servant, to be the heir. But who in turn became the heir? Let's get that in, um, what is that, Genesis, the 17th chapter? Uh, let's get that in Genesis, the 17th chapter. This is Genesis, chapter 17. And um, let me read a little bit of this. This is, um, and when Abraham, verse 1, and when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty power, Yahweh, walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. Right? Now let's go down. Verse 7. It says, And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations, for an everlasting covenant, 
to be a power unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Right? That word seed. Let's get that word seed in the concordance. <clears throat> And that, that word seed goes into offspring, descendants, right? Children, semen. So out of his ball sack, on down to his descendants, his son, his son, his son, would that seed line be chosen? Now we know Abraham had more than one son. So let's find let's find out what seed was chosen. Um Let's go, let's go down, let's go back to Genesis chapter 17, and let's go down to uh, uh, verse 17. This is Genesis chapter 17, verse 17. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto Yahweh, O that Ishmael might live before thee. And Yahweh said, Sarah thy, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and I will make him fruitful and multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. And you look, like, you look at Ishmael today, them Arabs. All right, they're over there in a land full of a fruitful land, oil. They're 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 a big nation, but guess what? The Lord also blessed Ishmael because it goes back to the covenant that he first stated with Abraham. I shall bless thee, it, I shall bless the families of the earth out of thee, out of the from thee, right? But he didn't choose Ishmael. Let's go back to verse 19. And Yahweh said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after the, after him. So Abraham and Isaac's seed, all right, is where the covenant and the promise is going to, going to follow through. Uh, the scripture that I brought in the beginning of this lesson, his word is above his name. So no, no matter in the year 3000, all right, right now we're in the year 2021, in the year 3000, all right, <laughs> this covenant is intact. Ishmael can't come in the future and say, no, I'm a part of this covenant now. No, Ishmael, you was blessed, but you wasn't blessed with the covenant, the everlasting covenant that we're getting into. Now, let's get that word covenant in the concordance. <clears throat> And that, that word covenant means um, an alliance, a pledge, a treaty, an ordinance, friendship, right? So if you go and say the Lord, basically Christianity is saying the Lord break, breaks his covenants. He breaks his alliance. He, break, he breaks his pledges. He breaks his agreements, his, his agreements. Because if, if he says that, that the covenant is through Abraham and Isaac's seed, and you try to invite Ishmael or any other nation in, you're saying that the Most High broke his, broke his covenant and then allowed it to be through all seeds. All right, see where I'm going with this? Now, from there, let's go to the covenant that was established with Moses. And keep in mind, this is following through the seed line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Who's Jacob? Jacob had 12 sons. That seed line, his descendants, which became the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. All right. Now let's get um, Exodus, the 19th chapter. <clears throat> and let's read. Uh, let's see. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 19, verse 3. And Moses went up unto Yehovah, and the, Lord, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, not the children of Ishmael, not the children of Esau, 
not the children of Moab, not the children of Japheth, not the children of Ham. Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, that word covenant again, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So that covenant is just an extension of the covenant, covenant that was given with Abraham. You should be a peculiar treasure above all the rest of the nations, above all the other people of the earth. Why? Because it's the promise, the covenant went through Isaac. Right? Now from there, let's get um let's get um because we know when we go to Deuteronomy 28, you know, which I'm not gonna get it, but it speaks about the Lord said he's when the when the covenant was presented before before the nation of Israel, he said, I set before you life and death. Um be wise what you're gonna choose, right? And, and our nation our nation chose death. So we was thrown into captivity and we're into cat we're in the captivity to until this day, right now at this moment, for breaking that covenant, that first covenant, right? So even though the nation of Israel broke that first covenant, since the Lord is bound by his word, um, he still provided them a way, a mediator, an intercessor for them to still be able to come back to him to keep that covenant alive that he established with Abraham, because Point being, Abraham had passed, right? Isaac had passed. So their descendants down the line broke the covenant that was an extension of the covenant that was um, brought forth with them. So if they would have, if the Lord would have then came and said, well, Abraham, Isaac, your, your descendants as a nation, they broke my covenant. I had to throw them in captivity. Now I'm, I'm done away with them. I'm not, I'm not choosing them no more. Now I'm allow all nations to be part of the covenant. That still will make him a liar, all right? But he didn't do that. Okay? So from there, let's get the covenant established with um David. Let's get um let's get let's get David. Let's get 2 Samuel the seventh. Let's get 2 Samuel the seventh chapter. Because David also comes from that line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um 2 Samuel the seventh chapter. And it's very simple. Who who wrote who wrote when you when you go into the scrolls? Because the Bible is nothing but a record book of the Hebrew Israelites, all right? A history book and a record book. Who wrote these scrolls? Who wrote these prophecies? Who worked? Who worked these? Who wrote these words? Hebrew Israelites, all right? But um, this is Second Samuel chapter seven, verse um. Uh, let's start at verse. Let's start at verse ten. This is Second Samuel chapter seven, verse ten. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel. And I will plant them that they that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. Who's the children of the wicked? There's a seed line called Edomites, Esau, who are known as the wicked. All right. Verse 11. So it's going to it's going to come a point in, in, in the near future where the children of Israel are going to be placed in the land of their own. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Yashallah, Israel. All right. And the children of wickedness shall afflict them no more. No more calling us black, it's, um, Mexicans and savages and Indians, but you're going to recognize us as the children of Israel, the true nation, the true children of the Most High Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shah. Verse 11. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies, also the Lord tell of thee that he will make thee in house. And when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed. Is that word seed again? So there's no way that other nations can interject themselves or graft themselves into something they were never part of. I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Now, this is twofold because it is talking about the son of Solomon, King Solomon, but we know that Solomon. In the, in the reincarnation is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai, because Solomon's kingdom wasn't established forever. Only Yahweh Shai's kingdom is going to be established forever. And this is the key point in verse 14. I will be his father 
and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the, and with the stripes of the children of men. So Solomon committed iniquity, but he wasn't beaten with the stripes of men with the rod of men. He came back as Yahweh Shah, the deliverer, the intercessor, the, the intercessor, the mediator, the true high priest for the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect. He was chastised with the rod of men when he came as that lamb that was sent forth to be the ultimate sacrifice for the nation of Israel. All right, let's prove that. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 2. Because the Lord keeps his word. The Lord keeps his word. He even kept it to David. Acts chapter 2 verse 29. And this is what Paul said. It says, um, men and brethren. This is Acts chapter 2 verse 29. Men, men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. That he that he is both dead and buried, and his and his sepulchre is unto is unto us this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that Yahweh had sworn an oath to him, right? Because David was a prophet also, and he understood that the Most High sworn an oath to him. Let's 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 get that word oath. All right. He knew that the Most High was, was going to keep his word. <laughs> uh. This blue little be acting funny. Bear with me one second. Let's get that word oath there in verse 29. I mean, <clears throat> I mean on verse 30. But it goes into the same thing as on with the word covenant, a pledge, promise. All right? So the most I wasn't going to break his promise. To David, nor Abraham, nor Isaac, nor Jacob, nor, Mo nor Moses. All right, and if you understood reincarnation, you would understand that all those men came back receiving those same covenants, those same promises, all right, those same oaths. All right, this is verse 30, Acts chapter 2, verse 30. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that Yahweh had sworn with him an oath to him, that of the, fr that of the, fruit, the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, all right, not according to the spirit, the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh. All right, according to the spirit too, but also the flesh, because it would come from the sea line, the semen, his descendants, out of his ball sack. All right, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Yahweh Shah HaMashiach to sit on his throne. So that's the promise that was stated in 2 Samuel, because right there it says Christ, but we know that means Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, the Messiah, the deliverer. He would raise up Yahweh Shah HaMashiach to sit on his throne. He seen this before, spake of the resurrection of Yahweh Shehamashiach, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Yahweh Shah have the Most High raised up, wherefore we are all witnesses. So the Lord kept his oath, he kept his promise. Now, to wrap up this, um, this whole thing, let's get, um, what is it, what is it, um, Hebrews, the 8th chapter? <clears throat> Let's see. Let's let's get Hebrews the eighth chapter, and let's start it all. Uh, let's start it all. Uh, let's start at verse seven. This is Hebrews chapter eight, verse seven. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second, because Christians always talk about the new covenant, the new covenant. Well, all these covenants that have been established with the patriarchs of the nation of Israel were just extensions of the first covenants beforehand, all right, with Abraham, all right, with Moses, with David, all right, Isaac and Jacob. They're just extensions of the same covenant, all right? For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Verse 8, for finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come and save the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not all nations, because they were never part of any of the covenants. They weren't a part of that initial promise given to Abraham. Abraham's seed that was passed to Isaac, not Ishmael. Verse 9, and damn shall not know Edomites. Edomites didn't even come on the scene till Esau was born with Jacob. And by that time, this, the promise was already established through Isaac's seed, Jacob, to Jacob. All right? Verse 9, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them out of when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, save the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, save the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind, 
and I will write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a power, and they should be to me a people. So the Lord never done away with his he never did away with his people, and he had never allowed he never allowed all nations to, to interject themselves or graft themselves in into a promise, into a covenant that was never theirs. Alright? Um Let me see something. Because um, when you when you even go to that covenant with the first tabernacle with Moses, when we when we when we would sin, because we broke the first covenant, but whenever we would sin, you would have the intercessors, the mediators, which were the Levitical priests that were set up to sacrifice a lamb on the behalf of the sins of the nation of Israel. Well, now that ultimate lamb, that ultimate high priest is Melchizedek, Melot Tazadok, who is Yahweh Shah. Let's get that in um let's get that uh Salah. I had a um, phone call come in. That's so annoying when you're doing a lesson. But um, let's get that high priest in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verse 14. It reads, Seeing then that we have an high priest that is passed into heaven, and that is passed into the heavens, Yahweh Shah, the son of Yahweh, let us hold fast our profession, seeing then that we have this high priest. Verse 15, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we like as we are, yet without sin. Verse 16, Let us therefore come boldly into, unto the throne of grace, mercy, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So we're able to be adopted back, to be grafted back, to be accepted back to the Father. All right, through our big bro, our deliverer, our, our Messiah, Mashiach, Yehoshua, Shah, according to the covenant that was established with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's just an extension and a fulfillment. All right. Matter of fact, let me get let me wrap it up with um what you how I said. Let's get Bear me one second. Um this is um Matthew the fifth chapter. And this is what you how I said. Matthew chapter five, verse 17. I'm gonna wrap it up with this. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to, to but to fulfill. So with that, I hope the elect was edified. To the next time I say, Shalom.